Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Emil Vihandre and welcome to Physical Science. The topic for today is Bond Polarity and Molecular Polarity. Now, before we start, do you recall what is electronegativity? This indicates the attraction of electrons, meaning the higher the electronegativity, the more electrons are attracted to that element. The lowest known value belongs to francium with 0 0.7. We'll keep today's video simple. So we're going to imagine atoms to make our understanding a lot easier. So we have X atom and Z atom. Each has only two valence electrons. If we bond the two atoms, we create a double bond between them. Now let's see their electronegativity. Which atom will attract more electrons? Yes, it's correct. It's a Z atom. But what would it look like? The electrons are more attracted to the Z atom, so they are shifted more towards the Z atom by doing so, grants them partial charges. The excess of negative charges grants Z atom a partial negative charge and the X atom vice versa. This gaining a charge is what we call bond polarity. Polarity indicates only two things, like the north and south pole, the positive and negative pole, and for atoms, polarity means gaining a charge. We represent bond polarity with an arrow. The arrowhead represents the more electronegative atom. Now, let's have another example. Atoms K and B. Each atom has only one electron. And after bonding, we see the electronegativity for each atom. Can you determine the direction of our bond polarity? Since B atom becomes partially positive while K atom becomes partially negative, the bond polarity will point towards the left. We observe that the bond polarity is between two atoms greater than that is what we call molecular polarity. Using our previous XZ atoms wherein the Z atom is more electronegative, let's try bonding our imaginary Z atom to another X atom. By bonding again, can you indicate the bond polarity for our additional X atom? Yes, it's towards the left. Now imagine the two arrows cancelling out since they are equal in size but headed in the opposite directions. This sum of bond polarities within a molecule is what we call molecular polarity. We have two types of molecular polarity. When the arrows cancels out, this is what we call the first type, the non-polar. Let's try having these atoms bonded, having a bond polarity towards the left. If we were to bond another Z atom to the X atom, what is this molecule's molecular polarity? Yes, it's still non-polar. How about a different example? Let's try bonding three atoms of different electronegativities, atoms A, B, and C. A and B are bonded together while B and C are bonded to each other. Their electronegativities are... Now can you draw their bond polarities? Correct! Both are towards the right. Now what is the molecular polarity of this molecule? Amazing, it's polar, since they're headed in a particular direction. 
let's try a complex molecular geometry, like a tetrahedral, wherein chlorine is bonded to carbon, but chlorine is more electronegative. Can you tell the molecular polarity? Amazing, it's nonpolar, since the arrows cancel each other's out. How about this? Replacing one chlorine atom with a hydrogen atom. Now remember, hydrogen is less electronegative than carbon. Can you tell the molecular polarity? Yes, it's polar since they are all headed downward. This molecule is called H2O or water. Now bonding oxygen with hydrogen produces this shape. The two hydrogen atoms are bent since we find two lone pairs on oxygen. If oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, what is the molecular polarity of H2O? Yes, it's polar since they are headed upward and don't cancel each other out. As you can see, polarity will rely with not only the electronegativity but also with the geometry of the molecule. If they don't cancel out, the molecular polarity is always polar. And if they do, it's called nonpolar. I hope you learned something. See you in the next video. Goodbye!